Did you know that graphical abstracts boost citation and engagement with your paper, make it accessible for a broader audience and make people to remember your paper for a much longer time? In this video, we will reverse engineer the process of how to create a graphical abstract using a graphical abstract example from a high impact journal. You will learn step by step how to review examples and guidelines, how to plan your graphical abstract and finally what tools you can use to create that graphical abstract. If you don't know me yet, hi, my name is Einur. I'm a third year PhD student at Imperial College London and I made it my mission to teach you every secret I know in academia video by video through all my social media channels. So without further ado, let's dive right into the video. I assume that most of you know what a graphical abstract is. In case you don't know, here is a quick overview. So you know what an abstract is, right? A quick summary of your research that you put in front at the very first page of your paper. And it's basically just kind of like a trailer of your abstract, a movie trailer, so that people get interested in your paper, know what to expect, and then eventually read the entire paper, right? The main core message of your paper, similar to a written abstract, so that people look at that picture, look at that graphic, and get an idea of what the paper is about, and get uh, motivated to read the paper. So as I said, we're gonna reverse engineer the process of how to create a graphical abstract using this example here. This is from the paper Nature Chemical Engineering, and I've cited the authors in the video description, also put a link to the paper if you wanna check it out. Maybe it has woken up your interest. So before we look into more detail of our example, we're first gonna cover the topic of how to review guidelines and examples, okay? That's step number one if you wanna create a graphical abstract. So what does that mean? So every paper and every journal has different requirements when it comes to graphical abstracts. And you have to make sure before you even start drafting something together that you check those out. So what is the size of the graphical abstract? What are the dimensions? Are there any color restrictions? What is the font size that you should use? Do they have like any special requirements? Just check it out to be like on the safe side here. So that's the first thing. The second thing is you need to review examples, especially if you're new to creating graphical abstracts. This is very, very important. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna pick the paper that you wanna publish in. You can also pick other papers depending on, you know, pick some high impact journals, some journals that you wanna publish in, and then click through the graphical abstract and look at what people do in that journal. So go through a couple of them, look at how they're designed, look at the text to photo picture ratio, uh, look at what colors did they use, is it more like a flow diagram, is it just a picture, um, so that you get an idea and a feeling for how a graphical abstract in that journal looks like. Pick some of your favorites, you know, someone, some graphical abstracts will resonate more with you and you can assume that something that sparks your interest will also spark others interests, right? So pick them and then these are gonna be now like your inspiration and your examples that you can lean on when you create your own graphical abstract. All right, once you've done that, we're gonna move on to step number two, which is to plan your content. Now here's the thing, each paper, like when you write your paper, before you even start writing it, you have to know what is the message that you wanna convey with this paper, okay? So you did your research, you're done with it, you wanna publish it. If I were to ask you, tell me in one sentence, you only have one sentence, I mean one sentence, what is the main finding, the main message of your paper, okay? And you tell me that one sentence. Now write that sentence down, okay? Write it down and that's the one sentence that we wanna convey with that graphical abstract. So when someone sees your graphical abstract, we want them to understand this one core message of your paper. So now we're gonna move, like look at this a little bit with an example so that it's not that abstract. I'm gonna look at the graphical abstract here on my screen right now. So what you can see here is that it's an amazing flow chart of a process, right? So what they put in here is they say, okay, like on the left side, you can say it says production and use plastic waste. Okay, so this basically means we use plastic and we create plastic waste and the paper talks here about biodegradable plastic, okay? So basically plastic that you can throw in the environment and it will decrease Degrade itself. And they basically analyzed, okay, what happens when we take this biodegradable plastic and we put it in the trash bin and then we just burn it in the factories and recycle it the way that other plastic is recycled as well. So if we treat it just like normal plastic trash and just recycle it that way versus what happens when we throw this plastic into the garden and just let it biodegrade itself. And they figured out, and that's like now on the right side, that if the plastic biodegrades itself, it goes into the soil, it goes into fresh water, it goes into sea water and 
increases ecotoxicity and produces more greenhouse gases. So it contributes more towards global warming than if we would just take that plastic and do, do this industrial composting that they basically say uh, in this graph. So you can see like, I, I really, I picked this example because it is so, so good. Like with this one picture, you don't even need more information. Just with this one picture, we understand entirely what this paper is about. It's amazingly made, right? So this is gonna be our example. So what you wanna do now for them, you see like the brown section, that's basically the result part of this. So they figured out in their study that biodegradable plastic, if we just let it compost by itself, it's gonna be more toxic for the environment, right? Where well, you have to think, okay, what is your main message? So we want to lead the reader or person who sees that graphical abstract towards that main message, okay? So you're gonna create a graph that starts at the starting point. Okay, we have plastic waste and whatever that is in your case. And then we wanna move along through the processes and show, okay, like through this research, we figured out this, okay? So what you can now do is you already defined your end goal. Now we're also gonna define your beginning point. Like what is, where Where did you start? Where did this research start? What was the starting uh, position? And now we have to like um, fill in the gaps in between, right? So from that start point to the end point, you now have to create a logical flow. And that's up to you. Like look at the example, think about what you did so that the person understands, right? Um, what you're gonna do now is before you even start with any kind of fancy software and start drafting something, just take a notebook and a pen and do like some sketches. Just very roughly start from A, go to B and so on. Sketch your ideas so that you have like something to work with. Don't overthink it that much at this stage. It's still a draft, okay? It's fine. Just put your ideas out there. It will refine itself once you get to work. So once you've got that one initial draft done, then it's time to move on and uh, really take out the tools and draft a better version. So this leads us to our third part, which is the design process. Now, when we say design process, what we mean is, okay, we've got that notebook sketch done now. We've got our ideas sorted out, our main idea, our starting point. We've got our example. And now we want to like really take out the tools and digitalize it and draft that graphical abstract. So here, what you're gonna do is there are a couple of softwares that you can use. They sound less fancy than you might think, but that's good because that means that the learning curve for you is quite low and you can actually use them. So one of them is PowerPoint. I know this sounds like very cliche, but PowerPoint is actually a tool that a lot of people use for this. Reason being that we are scientists and we're not graphical designers, right? So in order to do like these graphical design pictures, we'd have to like learn that as well, which would be, which would cost a lot of time. And PowerPoint does the job. It literally does the job. Like you can do lots of great stuff with PowerPoint. The second thing I can recommend is Canva. I use Canva a lot, like for my social media stuff to create the thumbnails for these YouTube videos. And I use it all the time, but it's also great for graphical abstracts because you have uh, in Canva lots of like icons that you can use. You can click and drop them into place. Um, you have lots of templates and stuff. So it's a very useful tool. Um, I feel like in PowerPoint, you have to do more yourself. So if you have like complicated sketches that need lots of like individual design, then PowerPoint. Otherwise, if you just need like some flowchart things, some click and drop, uh, for example, again, look at the example that I've shown you here on the left side. They've used lots of general pictures. Like on the right side, you can see the world picture. This is something that you can just insert in Canva. You can just look, uh, search for world and then put it in, right? Super easy. Depending on your case, PowerPoint or Canva. If you work in the field of biology, chemistry, something natural sciences in that way, I also highly recommend BioRender, which is a great software because they have like all these cells and molecules and these processes, they have them already drafted and you can click and drop again these sketches into your graphical abstract which saves you a lot of time okay so these are the three tools that i would recommend basically powerpoint canva biorender so now you're going to take your draft and digitalize it and put it out there some general rule of thumb is be consistent with your color scheme be consistent with your fonts be consistent with the size of your text uh, all these things i think that goes without saying once you're done with that we're going to move on to the final stage of your graphical abstract which is the review process and it's actually super easy to get graphical abstracts reviewed because you're just gonna pick someone that is not familiar with your paper but still a scientist okay not someone that has nothing to do in your research area but I'm also not talking about your research body so it should be someone that does not know what your paper is about but still understands the fundamentals of your research like has that scientific background to like get it so you're gonna show that abstract to that person and you're gonna say hey based on this abstract do you understand what I want to say well what I want to communicate with my paper right and chances are high that in the first round of your review this person is not gonna get it and that's fine that's
that's good because then you get feedback on why they don't get it. So they're going to look at the picture and then they're going to say, okay, like, I don't get it. Like this part here does not make sense. I cannot connect the dots from here to there. And this is your feedback. This is amazing. And then you're going to take that feedback, refine it, pick someone else, ask again. And uh, yeah, this is how you refine your graphical abstract. Don't rely on your own judgment. You know what your paper is about and you might just very likely misjudge your graphical abstract. So show it to someone from that area who does not know exactly what your paper is about and ask them. That's going to be your best uh, bet here. So once they get it, you're done. That's a graphical abstract for you. And it's going to be a beautiful graf graphical abstract. I believe in that. Uh, you'll get it done. And yeah, these are all my tips on how to create a graphical abstract. If you have any more tips on graphical abstract creation, leave them in the comments. Let's start a discussion. Let's help other people to create beautiful graphical abstracts as well. Other than that, make sure to check out my Instagram channel as well, because there I share daily bite-sized academic tips. So I think it's going to be beneficial for you. Just scan the QR code here and you can follow me there. And finally, guys, this channel is super new. It's in its baby shoes, okay? We have a little over 2,000 subscribers here and every like, comment, subscription means a lot, like any form of engagement. You have no clue how much that means for a small channel like this because that's all it lives off. The more you engage, the bigger this channel gets and the better videos I can produce for you guys. So leave some love. That's the only thing I ask for. And yeah, that's it. Have a great day wherever you are and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.